Hi guys and welcome to Contextual Electronics. My name is Chris Gamble and today we're going to be talking about the modern tool set, uh, also known in previous videos as the push and shove router or the OpenGL. Really the tool set re refers to the, the method of drawing on the screen. So uh, if you're in the layout program and you want to, basically how it's rendering all of the lines and all of the graphics that we have going on here. So most of the time we don't have to care about this at all. The big change in KiCad 5.0 is that this is now the default. So let's take a look at what it looks like. This is the layout that we've been going, using as an example here for a while. And uh, to see what it looks like in the old method, right? So this is, this is the OpenGL, like I said, is default. Uh, if we wanted to switch back, we could use F9, or we could hit Legacy Tool Set. This is the old way, and this is what the old videos that we had drew like. Now, what you'll really notice here is that it really starts to bog down uh, because there's just a lot of information, and this is one of the reasons they started switching to the OpenGL. I think there's just more, more tools in there, and uh, it, draw, it renders a little bit faster on your screen. Right? It has an acceleration here. So uh, in terms of workflow, it's a lot faster. Now, that's not the only thing. Not, not just the uh, processor going faster, but it's also a faster method for, for creating, creating traces and creating connections between different points on a board here. So we're back in the OpenGL or the modern tool set here. And what I did is I took this design and I deleted one of the traces here. And I wanted to just use it as an example to show how I actually use the push and shove router. I, I deleted one of the traces in some of the more condensed areas. You can see there's a couple areas here, like this part's pretty condensed, this part's pretty condensed. But you'll, what you'll also notice is that these are actually drawn, uh, you know, they all start to come together at a certain point, and that's because uh, the push and shove router basically redrew them, and so it's really assisting me here. Now I have a joke t-shirt about never t trusting the auto router, but I trust the heck out of the push and shove router. So uh, let's take a look here. If I hit X to start, I'm going to click on this pad to start. I'm going to hit V to drop a via. And then I'm going to hit 3, which is my hotkey to switch to the, the pink layer, inner layer copper 2. So I'm going to start drawing here. Now what you see is as soon as I go near a via here, if I try and move it at all, it really just starts bumping out of the way. And oftentimes what happens is that one, it kind of is a cascading effect here. And uh, so, you, you know, if you're trying to squeeze between things, you have to be careful not to touch them. Like I am showing here, as you bump them, if you get back out of the way, it usually resets to where it was, and it you know it really is just intelligent like that. It also does other things where like the via doesn't just move; it actually hops over traces sometimes as well. And these things are really really important and really help uh, designs. So, like I said, you know you'll see things lighting up here. Some things go back, some things don't. Uh, so, and like I said, if you want to start here, so if you're if you're going through an area where you're like, oh, I, I really can't bump anything, I usually will click to draw, uh, you know, to anchor that trace there, and then I'll make sure that I'm clicking each time to, to without lighting up the other, the other traces that are happening. What I'm now realizing is I'm pretty sure I'm going up the wrong pathway anyway, so I'm going to hit Escape and Control z to go back a couple traces here. Uh, and I'm actually going to go up and over. Like I said, I'm just, I'm just trying to follow the old, the other uh, traces that already existed here. I did delete and, and uh, I did delete them. Uh, with a single trace, and then I'm redrawing it now. But you're seeing as as I bump traces out of the way, they light up. Some some of them move, some of them don't. And I'm just going to try and get up to. I think it's where is that thing? It's up and over there. So I think I want to go like this up through here. That's actually. It looks like it's purple, but it's actually pink. Or sorry, that's actually on the red layer. So it, it looks like. I think it's just because it's darkened. And I'll just try and get through up and around here. Each time I, I click, it creates a bend or a curve. If I want to switch the curve, you can do uh, the backslash key, and that actually changes the orientation there. If I right click, you can also see the other things that are the other um, the other options that are here for the interactive router settings. You may have seen this one before. This is actually what we showed in that first push and shove video. We were actually showing a lot of the walk around, but now we're doing a lot more shove. And um, <clears throat> you can see all the different options that we have here. We'll go over those at a different time. Uh, so we're just going to finish out here to this layer. Hit V. That's going to drop a via. And then I'm going to hit 2 to go to the yellow layer. And now I'm going to try and draw and follow along where I was. Some people coming from other CAD programs will notice, hey, hey, this isn't that different. I mean, like, this is actually, but this is a, um, you know, this is a new thing for KiCad, and this is this is a high-end feature that for a long time KiCad did not have, and a lot of uh, a lot of lower-cost 
layout programs don't have access to. So I feel really grateful for that. Hit forward to switch to the back layer, and then I finished it out. There we go. Now I'm going to show another thing here. You notice that when I drew it here, I actually drew, it's kind of going underneath that, that back copper layer. And so what I'm going to do is mouse, hit X to go back into the drawing layer, and then I'm going to hit D. Actually, first I'm going to hit B to, um, to refill the zone. So it's refilling the zone over top of it now. Uh, I'm going to hit 4 to go to the back layer and then draw this in here. Okay, hit B again to redraw it. Now you see that that copper area that was, was not filled in before, or that was filled in before, is now not filled in. But I would like to get more copper in here in general. So what I'm going to do, I'm in, the, I'm in the drawing layer. You can tell because of that crosshatch um, thing there. Well, if I mouse over a track now, I can hit D and actually start to shove it, shove it around without actually needing to redraw anything. And that actually is something I do quite often to try and, like I said, to move copper around to, to get a more open area here. That really, really is helpful. So I hit B again, and it refills this zone. So this is a key part of my workflow. I'm, I'm doing this every single day when I'm doing layout. I am pushing and shoving stuff around. I'm using the interactive push and shove router because it just really makes things easier. Like I said, you know, if you look at the, the layout here, uh, you know, this is maybe not the best layout in the world, but it's definitely a complicated layout, and it's got a lot of uh, crisscross patterns here. This would have been taken me probably twice as long, maybe three times as long, to do it without uh, without a, a push and shove router there. Because every time, every time I'm like, oh well, this track didn't actually make it through, I have to delete it, go back, and uh, you know, it just the planning, the planning stages are just much and much much more critical when you're uh, when you're not using a push and shove router. So that's just a quick look at the push and shove router. I do try, suggest you try it out. Um, uh, one thing I will note is I actually was just recording with a KiCad 5.1, and I'm moved back to 5.0 to actually come and record this video specifically because that actually is all changing. So that is something to keep in mind. I will definitely make a video when I switch over to 5.1 for a lot of these videos. Um, a lot of the actually I can just show you real quick. A lot of the uh, so if I wanted to change the uh, the design rules here right so this is actually the track clearance and the track width of the default stuff here so you can see that when i start drawing a trace here you see there's that outline there that's the clearance we'll talk about that more in other videos as well but the outside of that is six mils around that and the track itself is six mils uh, that entire dialogue has changed and that really impacts that impacts things like the push and shove router as well because the the uh constraints of the push and shove when it decides how close can one trace go to another are specifically from that. It's not just the DRC stuff now. It's also determining how, how your board ultimately ends up looking from the clearances that we show there. So like I said, more videos about this coming in the future. KiCad 5.0 does use this as the, as the default now, and I'm really, really happy to be using it. Hopefully you are too. If you haven't, I do suggest trying it out. If you want to discuss it, go over to the KiCad forum. That's forum.kiCad.info. If you want to learn more about electronics and how to do layout in general, you can also join us over at contextualelectronics.com or the Contextual Electronics Forum, which is forum.contextualelectronics.com. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next time.